This is programming in assembly. Now you might think that assembly language is kind of dumb as it's basically binary, but it is essential to write memory efficient code as well as flex on your friends. Okay, the only part you need to know over here is the commands and we'll cover those again so don't worry about them anyways. This is just to show you pictures. We'll start off by writing a program to accept five numbers and display them. Now again this might sound pretty dumb to do but in assembly this is a really good place to start as it's neither too easy nor too difficult for beginners. We start up by writing section.data where we can initialize variables with values which we already have. So here I write the input message followed by 0xa for new line. To define the message length we use equ which stands for equate. Now this is similar to hash define of C++ and it's used to define constants. Now subtracting this from the dollar sign we perform some magic to get the length of the input message. We do the same thing for output message itself. If you have eyes and a brain you may notice that I am using a directive called db which stands for declare byte which allocates a byte to each character of the string message. There are various directives such as declare word, declare quad word etc which we will discuss in the following videos. So keep your eyes peeled for that. To reserve space To reserve space for the variables which we will eventually need, we write section .bss. Here we declare the space of array of numbers to be accepted as ARR and using the directive resb, we give every digit of the array a chance to be loved and live in a byte of space. We do the same for counter and move on. Next section .text, where we start label global underscore start followed by underscore start. And here is where we can actually write the assembly code. The first few lines over here are basically to ask the system to print the input message. We first call the system.write operation by moving 1 to accumulator, 1 to the file handler to write to console. And on top of all that we give the address of the message and the message length to RSI which is the register source index as well as RDX which shows the length of the message. Then by syscall I can call your mom and tell her all about your YouTube search history so that Nah don't worry I won't do that if you're subscribed. Now we set a counter to 5 for 5 numbers which you are about to get. Then move the reference of the array to RBP. Basically this is a loop to get the input of numbers from user. Moving 0 to RAX invokes the system call read whereas moving 0 to RDI will invoke STDIN file handler give the reference of the array to RSI and the variable length to RDX and then using syscall we call all of the above statements. We add 17 to RBP so that we can take the next elements of the array by moving on to the further memory locations which are unoccupied. Increment the counter by 1 and check. If the counter is 0 then we jump to the next statement and if it is not 0 then we will return to input. We do that by using the jnz statement which means jump if not 0. I will just copy and paste this below since I am really hard working and display the output message which is defined in section dot data. Now we will copy the output label from above while taking input from the user and keep the output message there so that we can confirm we then write add rbp17 so that we can increment the rbp register to the next number to be displayed to exit from the program we move 60 to accumulator uh, and initialize the rdi register by using xr which is clearly the superior way of doing it as i am doing it myself then we'll run the code by using the commands on on the screen which you can hopefully see okay so here at line 17 we forgot to put an underscore Disgusting! 
Now we compile and link the code and run the output file. Now I input some random numbers and as you can see we see the output message displayed six times. Now we know that everything is working correctly. So we'll just replace this with the actual numbers we want to display by giving the address of RBP and 17 to the right register running the same again. This is now working and there you have it. Frame this on the wall because this is probably one of the very few times your program is going to work this easily. This video is just the tip of the iceberg and I hope it helps you appreciate the true intellect between assembly programmers and the software which was around before modern day languages were created. Thank you.